Hello everybody, I am Mrs. Puppet and this is my place. Are you ready for another story time? Because I am and I'm very excited about it. I picked a story for today called The Brave Tin Soldier and it's full of adventure. I think you're going to find it very exciting. The Brave Tin Soldier There were once five and twenty tin soldiers who were all brothers for they had been made out of the same old tin. They shouldered arms and looked straight before them and wore a splendid uniform of red and blue. The first thing in the world they ever heard were the words, Tin Soldiers! uttered by a little boy who clapped his hands in delight when the lid of the box which they were laying in was taken off. They were given to him for a birthday present, and he stood at the table to set them up. The soldiers were all exactly alike, excepting one, who had only one leg, as he had been left until last, and there was not enough of the melted tin left to finish him. So they made him stand firmly on one leg, and this caused him to be very remarkable. The table on which the tin soldiers stood was covered with other playthings, too, but the most attractive to the eye was a pretty little paper castle. Through the small windows of the rooms, you could see everything. And in front of the castle, there was a number of little trees that surrounded a piece of looking glass, which was intended to represent a transparent lake. Swans made of wax swam on the lake and ref were reflected in it. All this was very pretty, but the prettiest of all was a little lady who stood at the open door of the castle. She too was made of paper, and she wore a dress of clear muslin with a narrow blue ribbon over her shoulders, just like a scarf. In front, these were fixed with a glittering tinsel rose as large as her whole face. The little lady was a dancer, and she stretched out both her arms and raised one of her legs so high that the tin soldier could not see it at all. And he thought that she, like him, only had one leg. That's the wife for me, he thought. But she is too grand and lives in a castle, while I have only a box to live in, five and twenty of us all together. That is no place for her. Still, I must try to make her acquaintance. Then he laid himself at full length on the table behind a snuff box that stood upon it so he could peep at the little delicate lady, who was continuing to stand on one leg without losing her balance. When evening came, the other tin shoulders were all placed into the box, and the people of the house went to bed. Then the playthings began to have games of their own. They began to pay visits, to have sham fights, and to give balls. The tin soldiers rattled in their box. They wanted to get out and join the amusements, but they could not open the lid. The nutcrackers played leapfrog. The pencil jumped about the table. There was such a noise that the canary woke up and began to talk. In poetry, too! Only the tin soldier and the dancer remained in their places. She stood on tiptoe, with her legs stretched out as firmly as he did on one leg. He never took his eyes from her for even a moment. The clock struck twelve, and with a bounce, up sprang the lid of the snuff box. But instead of snuff, there jumped up a little black goblin, for the snuff box was actually a toy puzzle. Tin soldier, said the goblin. Don't wish for that that does not belong to you. But the tin soldier pretended not to hear. Very well, wait until tomorrow, said the goblin. When the children came in the next morning, they placed the tin soldier in the window. Now whether it was the goblin who did it or the draft, it is not known. But the window flew open and out fell the tin soldier heels overhead from the third story into the street beneath. It was a terrible fall, for he came down, head downward, his helmet and his bayonet stuck in between the flagstones, 
and his one leg stuck in the air. The servant maid and the little boy went downstairs straight away to look for him, but he was nowhere to be seen, although once they nearly trod upon him. If he had called out, Here I am, it would have been all right, but he was too proud to cry out while he wore his uniform. Presently it began to rain, and drops fell faster and faster, and there was a heavy shower when it was all over. Two boys happened to pass by. One of them said, Look, there's a tin soldier. He ought to have a boat to sail in. So they made a boat out of newspaper and placed the tin soldier in it and sent him sailing down the gutter while the two boys ran alongside of it and clapped their hands. Good gracious, what large waves arose in that gutter and how fast the stream rolled on, for the rain had been very heavy. The paper boat rocked up and down and turned itself around sometimes so quickly that the tin soldier trembled, yet he remained firm. His countenance did not change. He looked straight before him and shouldered his musket. Suddenly the boat shot under a bridge, which formed part of a drain, and then it was as dark as inside the tin soldier's box. Where am I going now? thought he. This is the black goblin's fault, I am sure. Ah, well, if the little lady were only here with me in the boat, I should not care for the, if it were dark. Suddenly there appeared a, appeared a great water rat who lived in the drain. Have you your passport? asked the rat. Give it to me at once. But the tin soldier remained silent and held his musket tighter than ever. The boat sailed on and the rat followed it. How he did gnash his teeth and cry out to the bits of wood and straw, Stop him! Stop him! He has not paid the toll and he has not shown his pass! But the stream rushed on stronger and stronger. The tin soldier could already see daylight shining where the arch ended. Then he heard a roaring sound, terrible enough to frighten the bravest man. At last, at the end of the tunnel, the drain fell into a large canal over a steep place, which made it dangerous for him as a waterfall would be for us. He was too close to make it stop, so the boat rushed on, and the poor tin soldier could only hold himself as stiffly as possible, without moving an eyelid to show that he was not afraid. The boat whirled around three or four times and then filled with water to the very edge and nothing could save it from sinking. He now stood up, uh, up to his neck in water while the deeper and deeper sank the boat. And the paper became soft and loose and wet until at last the water closed over the soldier's head. He thought of the little elegant dancer whom he should never see again and the words of a song sounded in his ears. Farewell, warrior, ever brave, drifting onward to thy grave. Then the paper boat fell to pieces, and the soldier fell in the water, and immediately afterwards was swallowed up by a great fish. Oh, how dark it was inside the fish! A great deal darker than the, in the tunnel, and narrower too. But the tin soldier stood firm, and lay at full length, shouldering his musket. The fish swam to and fro, making the most wonderful movements, but at last he became quite still. After a while, a flash of lightning seemed to pass through him, and then all the daylight approached, and a voice cried out, I declare, here's the little tin soldier. The fish had been caught, taken to the market, and sold to the cook who took him into the kitchen and cut him open with a large knife. She picked up the little soldier and held him by the waist between her finger and her thumb and carried him into the next room. They were all anxious to see this wonderful soldier who had traveled about inside a fish, but he was not at all proud. They placed him on the table and how many curious things do happen in this world. There he was in the very same room from the window of which he had fallen. There were the same children, 
the same plaything standing on the table, and the pretty castle and the elegant dancer still stood at the door. She balanced herself on one leg and held up the other, so she was as firm as himself. It touched the tin soldier so much to see her that he almost wept tin tears, but he kept them back. He only looked at her, and they both remained silent. Presently, one of the little boys took up the tin soldier and threw him into the stove. He had no reason for doing so, so therefore it must have been the fault of the black goblin who lived in the snuff box. The flames lighted up the tin soldier as he stood. The heat was very terrible, whether it proceeded from the real fire or from the fire of the love he felt for the little lady he could not tell. Then he could see that the bright colors were faded from his uniform, but whether they had been washed off during his journey or from the effects of his sorrow, no one could say. He looked at the little lady, and she looked at him. He felt himself melting away, but he still remained firm with his gun on his shoulder. Suddenly the door of the room flew open, and a draft of air caught up the little dancer. She fluttered like a sith right into the stove, by the side of the tin soldier, and was instantly in flames and was gone. The tin soldier melted down into a lump, and the next morning when the maid servant took out the ashes of the stove, she found him in the shape of a little tin heart. But the little dancer nothing remained of except for the tinsel rose, which was burnt black as a cinder. Wasn't that a very exciting story? That little tin soldier went through a whole lot of adventures, yet he remained brave through everything. And he and the little lady did truly love each other, and so therefore, when they finally saw each other at the end, and he ended up going into the fire, she went into the fire with him so they could be together forever. Isn't it beautiful how love works like that? Anyway, I hope you really like this story. I, I find it to be one of the, the better ones and best ones that we have read so far. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Bye!